One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account... Only Rosie O'Donnell. Number nine, a Rosie by any other name is just as degenerate. Well, Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. I mean, both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. She talks like a, a, like a truck driver. Trump is not the nicest kid on the playground. Rosie is a loser. To be fair, Rosie started this feud in 2006 after the Donald decided not to strip Miss USA of her crown when she was caught underage drinking. O'Donnell criticized his ethical judgment. Everyone deserves a second chance. It all went downhill from there. So probably I'll sue her because it would be fun. I'd like to take some money out of her fat ass pockets. in the news again because he's allowing well because this show the apprentice is starting again in january oh, yeah. he held a big press conference to see if he was going to allow miss usa such a prestigious title <laughs> to um regain well, and reach to be to you reach miss america the is the prestige miss usa is a different suit. thing representing america in a bathing suit. yes it's basically a model competition let's be realistic okay they what about peace in the world you know but apparently um this young girl, Tara Connor, how old is she? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 21. She went out and she was partying. She's from Kentucky. She's so cute. She went to New York and she was hanging out at all the parties, doing what Paris and Lindsay do, you know, right. dancing, whatever. And so he held a press conference to <laughs> announce whether or not she was going to retain her crown. Yeah, and then yeah. she started to cry. She did. So I just want to thank Donald. Just give me a second chance. And, it was brilliant. And there he is, hair looping, going, everyone, everyone deserves a second chance. Left the first wife, had an affair, left the second wife, had an affair, had kids both times, but he's the moral compass for 20 year olds in America. Donald, sit and spin, my friend. I don't enjoy him. No. No, no, no. no. Well, listen, you're the side. Let's hear the other side. But this is the thing. You know, you say what you want to say about yeah. him. I know you said that his father gave him his money. It's I know true. that. You, well, listen, the fact of the matter is you say what you want to say, but he's a businessman. Yeah. He's a, a master of branding. There are a lot of kids who have inherited money from their parents, and you can't see anything about it except a car or a house that's defunct. He ha inherited a lot of know, money. Wait a minute. No, and he's been bankrupt so many times where he didn't have to pay. You know, it's sort of uh, interesting. I never declared bankruptcy. And people have but, been bankrupt, but he's got back. The people beneath him, who he owed money to, got shorted out of the money. But he got to again try again and again. And you know what saved him the second time? After his father died, with that money, he paid off all his bankruptcy. This is well, not a he, self made he's honorable. Man. He paid off his creditors. No, he, he didn't. didn't. He didn't pay, pay off the people well, he owed. Well, put you on a payment plan. Lawsuit. Get but, ready. But, this is going to be good. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> He's going to sue me, but he'll be bankrupt by that time, so I won't have to worry. But uh, I don't know. I just think that this man is like sort of one of those, um, you know, snake oil salesmen yes. in, in Little House on the Prairie. You remember that episode yes. where the guy would come in with a lot of bottles and everybody would be like, ooh, and then he'd leave and little Laura Ingalls would go, Dad, I, I don't think there's anything in this bottle. <laughs> well, you're right, half Pike. That man was full of crap. You know, that's sort of what it is. Think, you know? I love it. That's my opinion. I don't enjoy it. Year's Eve. What did you do? Well, pretty much I went on various television shows and bashed Rosie O'Donnell. There you go. Well, Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. I mean, both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. She talks like a, a, like a truck driver. Rosie attacked me personally because I was very happy when her talk show failed. The other thing that failed, and this was a real monster, and everybody was suing her, was her magazine. Her magazine called Rosie was a total disaster. So I loved it. I gloat over it. I think it's wonderful because I like to see bad people fail. Rosie failed. 
I'm happy about it. She's basically a disaster. Well, she called me a snake oil salesman. And, you know, coming from Rosie, that's pretty low because when you look at her and when you see the mind, the mind is, is weak. I don't see it. I don't get it. I never understood. How does she even get on television? I believe Barbara made a terrible mistake putting her on, and I think Barbara's probably paying a big price. If I were running The View, I'd fire Rosie. I mean, I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. I'd say, Rosie, you're fired. We're all a little chubby, but Rosie's just worse than most of us. But it's not the chubbiness. Rosie is a very unattractive person, both inside and out. Rosie's a person that's very lucky to have her girlfriend. And she better be careful or I'll send one of my friends over to pick up her girlfriend. Why would she stay with Rosie if she had another choice? She's trying to use ABC and The View to get even with me. But with me, we fight back. I'll probably sue Rosie because she doesn't tell the facts. As an example, I'm worth many billions of dollars. Now, she said I was bankrupt. I never went bankrupt. So probably I'll sue her because it would be fun. I'd like to take some money out of her fat ass pockets. I actually think they ought to look at her whole life and see where she's coming from because I think she's got some very deep seated problems. Perhaps it should be Rosie that goes to rehab. Rosie is a loser. What was your relationship like between you and Rosie prior to the feud? It was, it was okay. I was never a friend. She came to my wedding. She ate like a pig. And I mean, seriously, the wedding cake was, was, it was like missing in action. I couldn't stand there. I didn't like but a particular woman. I wanted her at the wedding. Marla, uh, I think they were friendly or something. And so I said, what's Rosie O'Donnell doing? She was at my wedding. Can you believe it? Donald Trump's name. First, he let a wayward Miss USA keep her crown. Then came a verbal smackdown between him and Rosie O'Donnell. So much for holiday goodwill. But Donald joins me now on the phone to talk about it. He is in the air somewhere between New York and Palm Beach, heading for his resort at mar lago Where exactly are you, Donald? Well, I'm someplace in the middle, Larry. I'll <laughs> be there in about an hour. And you wanted to do this, so for you, I do it. Thank you, my man. All right, let's, let's go back to earlier. Uh, let's watch Rosie O'Donnell's comments on The View on Wednesday after you had announced you were forgiving Miss USA. Here, here's, the, here's the tape. By the way, we invited Rosie to appear on the show tonight, and she declined. Did you see that show, Donald, or did you hear about it? Well, I heard about it, and then I got a tape, and I thought it was disgraceful. I mean, here's a, a, a horrible human being, a terrible woman, she looks bad and she sounds bad. And believe me, as bad as she looks, she's worse inside. But <laughs> she was very offended that I gave a nice young lady a second chance. I gave her a second chance because she has a problem. She's getting the problem taken care of. Rosie thought it was terrible that I gave her a second chance. Of course, Rosie, have given, she's given women many, many second chances, only women. But Rosie was highly offended at this Larry. Look, Rosie's a loser. You know it, and I know it. Her magazine failed. Her ratings for her show were terrible. They basically threw her up the air. With the magazine, there was litigation all over the place. She folded up like an umbrella. Dude. She is not a good person. She makes false statements, and she is not a good person. She's a bully, and all I did to a bully is hit him right between the eyes, and she folds up like a tent. Do you know her, Donald? I know her for a long time, Larry, and I know her too well. I told Barbara Walters today, Barbara called me, and Barbara apologized. And I told Barbara Walters, she's going to destroy your show. You know, the ratings for The View have not been very good. Last year, they had their lowest ratings ever. But Rosie, you know, she gets a couple of people like me to call in, and all of a sudden, they have higher ratings. But Rosie will destroy The View. People don't like her. They don't like the show with her on it. The show has lost a lot, Larry. But Barbara's standing by us. She gave us this statement. Executive, uh, She's the executive producer and co-host. She said, Donald Trump, this is Barbara. Donald Trump is a personal friend of mine, has been a good friend of The View for many years. I'm sorry there's friction between Donald and Rosie. That said, I do not regret for one moment my choice to hire Rosie O'Donnell as the moderator of The View. I certainly hope and expect that this tempest will pass uh, quickly. Your comment on that, Donald? Well, I can tell you for a fact that that's not what Barbara told me. 
Barbara is not a fan of Rosie. She's embarrassed by Rosie. She doesn't like Rosie. And I guess she can't say that publicly. But trust me, Larry, that's what she told me over the phone. Uh, Donald really fired back today. He did not uh, go quietly into this good night. Let's watch uh, Donald on Entertainment Tonight and The Insider. Watch. She called me a snake oil salesman. And, you know, coming from Rosie, that's pretty low because when you look at her and when you see the mind, the mind is, is weak. I don't see it. I don't get it. I never understood. How does she even get on television? I'll probably sue Rosie because she doesn't tell the facts. As an example, I'm worth many billions of dollars. Now, it's not to brag about. I'm worth many billions of dollars. It's very simple. She said I was bankrupt. Now, I never went bankrupt. She said I filed bankruptcy three times. I never filed bankruptcy. I never went bankrupt, but she said I went bankrupt. So probably I'll sue her because it would be fun. I'd like to take some money out of her fat-ass pockets. By the way, a spokesperson for The View just called Donald to say their ratings are up 30%. I don't know the name of the spokesperson, but they called in the control room. Oh, no, their ratings are up. You know why their ratings are up? Because of people like me. They get us. Look at Danny DeVito. Look what happened to Danny DeVito on The View. He goes on there. I saw a clip of it. He's a friend of mine. He's a great guy. He was fantastic on The View. They made him look like he's an alcoholic, like he's a drunk. He wasn't drunk. They made him look that way. Look what they did to Kelly Ripper. Kelly Ripper is a terrific person. She didn't want to attack Rosie, which I think is a mistake. But if somebody wrapped their, their arm into my mouth, I would be complaining, believe me. Because what, what Clay Aiken did to Kelly Ripper was disgusting. So Rosie took Clay Aiken's side. The fact is, Rosie's a bad person. She's not good at what she does. She will destroy the view. You watch, did Larry. You? Mark my words. Did she? Just like her magazine went down. Larry, just like her magazine went down, just like her show went down, the view's over. Did she have a point in pointing out that uh, that y you were setting yourself as a moral judge of this uh, girl when there were moral questions about you? How do you react to that statement? Well, uh, Larry, I think I'm a lot better on the morality front than Rosie. I mean, take a look at Rosie. What do you have? The best thing Rosie has going is her girlfriend, Kelly. Now, if Kelly ever leaves Rosie, she'll never find another one, believe me. Because who's going to want Rosie? How would you like to have to kiss that good night, Larry? That would not yeah. be for you, believe me. Why did you forgive that girl? Why did I forgive what girl? The Miss USA what winner. What are we talking about, Rosie? No. Uh, I didn't forgive her, Larry. I didn't forgive her at all. And she's running on a little bit of a close thread. The fact is that... The Miss USA wonderful person was given a second chance. I didn't forgive her. She's working hard to gain my trust and other people's trust. She is going to serve, hopefully, as a role model. Well, Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. I mean, both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. She talks like a, a, like a truck driver. She doesn't have her facts. She'll say anything that comes to her mind. And, you know, her show failed when it was a talk show. She failed on that. The ratings went very, very low and very bad, and she got essentially thrown off television. Her magazine was a total catastrophe. She got sued. And, I mean, she's basically a disaster. And uh, here's what Rosie had to say today. This is like round two following Donald's remarks yesterday. It wasn't much, but here's what she said. Watch. Yeah. Look who's here today, Kelly. I was afraid to leave her home in case somebody with a comb over came and stole her from me. So, um, yeah, she's here now. So. Wait, do the thing. I love when you do the hair. Do the hair. Come on, do it, do it. Do I'm not doing it again. Do it, do it, do it. Hey, listen, it's a live show. You get me while I'm in the mood. And frankly, here's my comment to him. Headlines everywhere. Here we are, three days into the new year, and the War of the Rosie has exploded once again. There's no question about that. People know it. People that know her know it. And I assumed that it was over. She got beaten up pretty badly, and then she wrote a blog. Now, she didn't mention my name at all because she's gutless. But she's a, a person that, frankly, Barbara Walters, you know, she resurrected her. And Bar I will tell you this, Barbara is not thrilled about it because I spoke with Barbara. 
Barbara is not a fan of Rosie. That but, I can tell you. Now, I don't think Barbara's going to admit that, yeah, publicly but Barbara she, is not a fan of Rosie. Publicly, Barbara Walters has, has put out a statement basically saying that she's a friend of yours, but that she, uh, she likes having Rosie on The View. You, you think that's not the case? Well, what else is she going to say? And Rosie will fail with The View just like she's failed with everything else. In all fairness, Rosie got thrown off the air with her other show because she got poor ratings. And you're doing very well in your ratings, so congratulations. But Rosie's ratings were not good. And then she had a magazine, which was a total catastrophe. In fact, a rising star, the head of that whole publishing company, ended up losing his job over Rosie the magazine. It was a total failure. So Rosie was down and out, and Barbara resurrected her, at least for a little while. But Rosie will fail. I mean, Rosie's got a death wish. She is, is not a smart person. I know Rosie. What this do you is mean she's got a death wish? With intellect. Excuse me? What do you mean she's got a death wish? Well, I think she's got a death wish. I think Rosie will fail at whatever she does because ultimately she's got a death wish. That's my, that's my theory on Rosie. Uh, you're probably not a big reader of her blog, but I just want to read a, a poem or part of a poem uh, that she put on, uh, which has sort of sparked this all up again. She sort of compares you to, to a pimp. She says, remember the 70s, a young girl in New York City meets a pimp. He cons her into a life of illusion. She works for him. Do you think she's calling you a pimp? Well, she certainly is, and she shouldn't be doing that because that could cost her a lot of money. But the fact is that what I did and how this all started is I own the Miss USA pageant and the Miss Universe pageant. The Miss USA has had problems. Rather than getting rid of her, which a lot of people, frankly, wanted me to do, including Rosie, I gave her a second chance. She's right now in rehab, and I gave her a second chance. So instead of saying to this young woman who's in the very formative years, I, I said, hey, I'm going to give you, life is about second chances, I'm going to give you a second chance. Rosie went crazy. Now, I guarantee you, Rosie would have given her a second chance, but for other reasons. Rosie went crazy. And this is how it all started. It is totally ridiculous. But I really think Rosie has some real problems. I want to play uh, for, for the one or two people on the planet who didn't see this or haven't seen it subsequently what Rosie originally said uh, after the, the Tara Connor uh, press conference. Here, here's what she said on The View. He's the moral authority. Left the first wife, had an affair. Left the second wife, had an affair. Had kids both times. But he's the moral compass for 20-year-olds in America. Was it, was it that comment or was it her, her false allegations that you've declared bankruptcy uh, multiple times? Well, you know, it's sort of uh, interesting. I never declared bankruptcy. And like everybody else in the early 90s, I had difficulty, but I never went bankrupt. She said I did. I'm on the cover last month of the Forbes 400. I'm the cover boy of the Forbes 400 rich list. And I don't care about that, except it just shows what a liar she is. She said I went bankrupt. She talks about moral, which was false. She talks about moral compass. I mean, look at Rosie. Look at where she comes. Have you ever seen a comedy act, which is, by the way, terrible? I was at one of her comedy acts, and most of the people left because she was so disgusting. Not funny and disgusting. So, you know, Rosie shouldn't be talking. I mean, the one I feel sorry for in the whole thing is her girlfriend, Kelly. Anybody that has to kiss Rosie, I feel very sorry for. Rosie, on, on, in this new poem, she's also very critical of beauty pageants, calling them, and I quote, where women were paraded around, judged valuable or not by old and white and men. If you look like Rosie, you'd be critical of beauty pageants, too. Believe me. Rosie is a very unattractive woman, both inside and out. And as hard as it is to believe, inside is probably uglier than outside, and that's really saying something. But you have to understand, I know Rosie. Rosie's a loser. Rosie's been pulling the wool over people's eyes for a long time. She is a stone-cold loser. What she is is a bully. Rosie says a lot of negative things about a lot of people. Nobody, they don't do anything about it. I did something about it. Rosie is not a talented person, Anderson, and I think I've exposed that. I hope I have. Do you, how much of this is, is just for publicity? I mean, on, on her part or on your on part? On my behalf, I will tell you nothing. The Apprentice comes on on January 7th. The show, as you know, does very well. It gets very high ratings. I don't need Rosie to help me with my ratings. She probably needs me to help her with her ratings, but I don't need Rosie to help me with my ratings. Is it, but you're not really going to sue her, though. I mean, most legal experts we've talked to say, well, say there's probably not that much of a case. No, no, my lawyers... Hey, Anderson. I'm a very rich guy. It doesn't matter. I've heard that. It doesn't that. make any difference. <laughs> I'm a very, very rich guy. For Rosie to say I went bankrupt three times when I never went bankrupt at all, I never went bankrupt. And she said, I mean, you're not allowed to do that. For Rosie to call me a pimp, 
I'm a pimp. And you know why I'm a pimp? Because I own a beauty pageant. That's why she says I'm a pimp. She's... I'm a pimp because, unlike her, I gave a girl a second chance. That's why I'm a pimp. You're not allowed to make statements like that, Anderson. You, you've been really tough in some of your comments. I mean, uh, you know, saying she's a loser, g commenting on, on her weight. Why but attack Anderson, so hard? You, sir, I'm not running for office. I don't have to be politically correct. I don't have to be a nice person. Like I watch some of these weak-kneed politicians. It's disgusting. I don't have to be that way. Rosie is an unattractive person. Rosie is a very, she's a slob. And, you know, how she gets this girlfriend, I don't know. But I look forward to the day that Kelly leaves her. Because, Kelly, I, if you're listening, Kelly, and I'm sure you are, you can do much better. Is some sort of rapprochement between you two possible? Are Absolutely we, we going to see you I on no the view? Interest. Anderson, I have no interest in Rosie. Rosie is a stone-cold loser, resurrected temporarily by Barbara Walters. She will fail. She may pull Barbara down with her, but she will fail. She'll go off. She'll do something that's so insane that... I believe that Rosie has some serious mental problems. That's my feeling. Why do you think so many people find this fascinating? I mean, Maureen Dowd wrote about it in the, in the Times this weekend. Um, well, Maureen Dowd is a great woman who does, I, I think she's, you know, I've been reading her, and she was very nice to me. And to be honest, it started with a beauty pageant contestant. And frankly, she's a great beauty. Tara is a great beauty. So you have beauty, and then you have Rosie, the beast. You have beauty and the beast. So it works well. And then you have Trump. So it's like a good combination of events, but the fact is that it started very simply without Rosie. She interjected herself into this. A very big story was the Miss USA story, whether or not she was going to be terminated. And then the exact opposite of Miss USA in terms of, look, Rosie O'Donnell, you can't look worse than Rosie. She interjected herself into Miss USA, which is sort of hard to believe, and all of a sudden it went from the Miss USA, which was the monster story of the week, to Rosie and Donald Trump, which became the monster story of the week. So, you know, I don't know. She interjected herself in, but I finished it. I mean, I've exposed her for what she is. She's a bully. She's a, a woman with not a lot going for her. And, you know, the one thing I respect about Rosie, if you have that little going for you, to be even moderately successful like she is, is hard to believe. I give her credit for that. Would you go on The View and shake hands with her? No, I don't want to go on The View. I've been on The View many times. It's frankly not a show that does very good ratings. I mean, unfortunately, the only problem I have is I bring up the ratings of The View. This whole thing brings up the ratings of The View. I have no intention of going on The View. I, why would I go on The View? Rosie's a failure. She's always been a failure. Her shows all go down the tubes. How they thought she'd work on The View, ridiculous. The show is a big, big miss. I don't like the press. I don't like having to waste my time fighting some low life like Rosie. I don't really have to do that. But what I don't like doing is I don't like seeing somebody lie. I mean, here I am, one of the most successful businessmen in the world, and I have her saying that I declared personal bankruptcy. I mean, give me a break. And it turned out that I didn't, and ABC made Barbara Walters read that statement. Are you at all concerned, though, with the language that you're using and the things that you're saying about Rosie that people could see it as being really mean? Because it's playing out in public, and it could backfire on no, Rosie is a very mean person, and Rosie is a bully. And the only way, I learned this in high school, the only way you beat a bully is to hit him right between the eyes. you got to hit him hard and hit him fast and hit him right between the yeah, eyes. You're going after Cher and, and also uh, your old nemesis, uh, uh, Rosie O'Donnell. What's up? Well, no, Cher said some very unflattering and nasty things about Governor Romney, and I think it was inappropriate what she said, frankly. And... You know, I've watched her over the years. I knew her a little bit. And, you know, she reminds me of Rosie with slightly more talent. Not much more talent, but slightly more talent. Well, Cher said something wicked. She says if Romney gets elected, this is what twist. I don't know if I can breathe the same air as him and his right-wing racist, homophobic, women-hating, teabagger masters. To which you responded, um, I mean, that, uh, she's a, that Cher is an average talent who's out of touch with reality, but then you threw in Rosie. I mean, you resurrected Rosie into the fight by calling her a total loser. She wasn't even in this fight with you. Well, I likened her to Rosie as a loser, but, I, you know, I understand Cher, and Cher is somewhat of a loser. You, she's lonely, she's unhappy, she's uh, very miserable, and her sound-enhanced and computer-enhanced music doesn't do it for me, believe me. Well, it seems like you get into these, these, tw these Twitter battles with these women, these uh, uh, No, with people in general, women. not women. In fact, not usually women. women I prefer not because I find them much tougher than men. But 
actually I do on occasion get into battles and I also have my great likes. I mean, I also greatly respect people. It's really amazing. When I don't like somebody, their shows do really badly. Maybe it's subconscious, maybe it's will over matter, who knows? But their shows do really badly. Lawrence O'Donnell, his show is failing. It's a disaster. They moved him out of the 8 o'clock slot because Bill O'Reilly was absolutely killing him. They gave him the less coveted 10 o'clock spot, and he's dying at that. Then you have Rosie O'Donnell. It's really interesting. Their names are the same. Maybe they should get married, but Rosie just found a new mate, and I don't think she'd find him attractive, even if that were the way she goes. So Rosie O'Donnell's show is a disaster. It's a complete disaster. Now, that upsets me a little bit because I love Oprah, and I'd like to see everything on Oprah be successful. I want her network to be great. But Rosie's show is a complete and total disaster. Lawrence O'Donnell's show is a complete and total disaster. Move from a coveted spot. Now, even at 10 o'clock, it's a mess. So I have an idea. Maybe Rosie O'Donnell and Lawrence O'Donnell, and they must be related somewhere along the line, they should get together, form a show, and they'll have the lowest rated show of all time. What a good idea. I'm a natural at television.